I'm Bob Herschler. I've been a curator of mollusks in the Department of Invertebrate Zoology since 1985. And I'm going to talk to you today about my taxonomic inventory of Western North American spring snails and the impact of this work on conservation efforts. This story is relevant not only to the preservation of our natural heritage, but also to the ongoing struggle to balance the competing demands for precious water resources in, uh, in the arid west. Actually, that should have been my first slide when I said all that, but anyway. Moving on, um, spring snails uh, live in groundwater dependent habitats throughout much of Western North America. They tend to have very narrow distributions and they're vulnerable to many threats, especially groundwater pumping, which has the potential to dry springs over large areas. When a spring becomes dry, the snails in it become extinct. When I first started my inventory in the early 1980s, spring snails had been little studied taxonomically and were not receiving much conservation attention. Uh, it, over the past 30 years, I have described 160 new species of spring snails from the West, which has almost quadrupled the size of the fauna. Uh, this body of work has brought the western spring snails into focus as a major and critically imperiled uh, component of western American aquatic diversity and has also contributed to a sharp upswing in conservation efforts throughout the west. I'll give a few examples of these activities from Nevada which is the center of spring snail diversity. Uh, the Nature Conservancy has recently completed a statewide uh, the survey of the conservation status of spring uh, ecosystems and has developed a plan to stabilize and protect the various local hotspots of species endemism that are scattered throughout the state. These hotspots contain many spring snails. Uh, Impaired spring snail habitats are already being uh, rehabilitated in some of these places, including the Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is currently reviewing 35 spring snail species from Nevada and Utah for possible listing as threatened or endangered. The threats to these species include a proposed project that will pump groundwater from several uh, basins in, in eastern Nevada and transport it to Las Vegas for, for municipal use. There has also been a recent upswing in public education directed towards spring snails, focusing on their biodiversity value and their threatened status. My inventory is not yet complete, and I'm, I'm currently working to fill some large taxonomic gaps in the Pacific Northwest, and I'm also revising the taxonomy of a number of species that harbor cryptic diversity. I went through that rather quickly. Uh, um, I thank you for listening, and I guess I have time for a question. Okay. So how, how do these snails get from one of these isolated springs to another over time? Well, uh, that's sort of not entirely certain, but uh, you know, given that they're sort of concentrated near the head springs and they don't really go downstream very much, the general idea seems to be it's mostly birds that have moved them around and occasionally uh, you know, like during wetter periods of the past, there may have been connections, but again, they live in springs and they don't live uh, in, in other aquatic habitats very much. So uh, obviously, 
their, uh, their high fidelity to springs, which are isolated habitats, has contributed to how much they've speciated over time. Thank you. Okay, just to get started, I have a question for Bob. We're, we're both native New Yorkers. We actually went to the same school as undergraduates, but um, I studied fishes. Why, why did you go to snails? <laughs> We, why? Yeah. Well, it all comes down to, for me, uh, having taken some really great invertebrate zoology courses as an undergraduate, and that kind of inspired me to get interested in mollusks initially. And then in graduate school, um, I was further inspired by a famous malacologist in Philadelphia who worked on these tiny snails. and. I mentored under him and just stayed with it, and uh, it's been an interesting ride. Question for Bob. Is there a uh, fossil record of these spring snails? Yes, there is, but it's not particularly informative for anything because the shells of these little animals all kind of look the same. Uh, basically, the <laughs> shells that only a mother snail could love. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, the fossils can kind of say how long they've been around, but they can't even tell you, you know, what lineage or anything. It's not very helpful. But molecular data is helping in that regard a little bit. And then, so what are the, what are the species traits then that uh, you're describing? Well, uh, microanatomy, uh, one of the hurdles I had to deal with early in my career was learning how to dissect snails that as you may have seen in my first slide, which wasn't up very long, uh, snails that uh, are about the size of a poppy seed on a bagel. Um, <laughs> but I was able to do that, and uh, there's a lot of information in the anatomy. Uh, uh, for the past 20 years, uh, my team and I have also been using mitochondrial sequence data, which is good enough to sort these things to species with the aid of some morphology. So an integrative approach of sorts. 